Hey they say it's Ron. How's everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, just sitting here, man, uh, wetting my whistle and uh, got a stack of vinyl here to show. And uh, you know, I, I said earlier, you know, I'm gonna continue with this Arizona music thing that I got going. Well, on the turntable today, I've got Billy Cologne in the same. Uh, they were a sort of a new wave post-punk band, short-lived. Uh, this record came out in 79, and it's called uh, X and Y. And Billy Clone, he OD'd in 80 the following year, so they had a very short career. And uh, the band, you know, they, they stayed together, they formed their own band called the Jetsons, and they became a very popular 10P club act. So, uh, cool record, and uh, it was produced by Mike Candelo. Uh, famous Arizona music figure here and I'm sure a lot of you have heard of him so uh, yeah like I said I was wetting my whistle well this is what I'm wetting it with bacon soda uh, Lester Fixon's bacon soda I mean what better beverage to drink on the hogs ear report than bacon flavored soda Oh yeah, for some reason I got a craving for some eggs. Maybe some toast. Nice and crisp, just the way I like it. Alright, let's get going with the pile. Songs the Cramps Taught Us, Volume 1. And this is a newly released series, I believe, uh, out of Europe. It's on Cato Records. And this is all the original versions of songs that the Cramps covered over their career. And, uh, yeah, I think there's like six volumes available. Um, this is very cool. It's like two-thirds of it's rockabilly, then the other third is garage. And uh, Vinyl Richie's always been wondering, who did the original version of Goo Goo Muck? Oh, Rich, I got your answer. It was by a band called Ronnie Cook and the Gay Lads. That's right. You heard me right. I'm not going to repeat it, but that's who it was. And uh, here's the track listing. So these were cut, this was kind of pricey at 20 bucks, but really nice quality. No pebbles garbage here. This, this sounds really good. So um, I don't know if I would fork out on all six volumes, but I would I would definitely like to get maybe the first three. Okay, then I got uh, a blue cheer. And uh, This came out shortly after Dickie Peterson died in 09. Some of these have gatefolds and some of them don't. This one's one of the gatefold editions. Uh, I guess some of them are on uh, colored vinyl. This one is not. And it's on the uh, Shroom Angel label. Um, I've not listened to this one yet. Um, it's it's the album that they recorded in 79 before they did the Beast is Back uh, album in uh, I think it was uh, 84 I think. So yeah it's, yeah, it's got a dedication to Dickie on the back. Yeah, it's Blue Cheer 7. And this is uh, the Consumers, All My Friends Are Dead. And this is recorded in 77, but it was not released until 1995. This is Arizona's, Phoenix, Arizona's first punk rock band. And let me tell you, they kicked ass. They were killer. They don't call this album, All My Friends Are Dead, for nothing. The reason they're dead is because this band killed them. Uh, 
Yeah, that was pretty hokey. Uh, yeah, it's in the, in the red, and this is an original. This has been recently re reissued uh, in the past couple of years. Yeah, this is an original, 1995. There's no barcode on the back, and uh, you know, I, I I was here in Phoenix in '77, and when I heard this, I just could not believe the ferocity of the music. Uh, unbelievable. Um, this, just an incredible band, and I highly recommend this record. It's the whole thing is on YouTube, so you can sample it, and. Uh, I asked Vinyl Richie if he'd heard of them, he said he hadn't, but he's going to know them because they're, they're awesome. The, the guitarist in this band is uh, Paul Kotler. He went on to form 45 Grave after they moved to uh, L.A. And then later on he played in the Dream Syndicate. He joined the Dream Syndicate in 86. And I saw the Dream Syndicate in 86, so more than likely he was there when I saw them. But yeah. Just awesome, awesome album. Okay, this next one is Merkwood. And this originally came out in uh, 1973, but it sounds much earlier. It sounds like uh, 70, 71. Um, they were a UK band out of Dover, and they released this one album as a private pressing. They only pressed 99 copies. So this is mega rare. And uh, this is on the, uh, it's on the uh, Light in the Attic label. Uh, the label. It's got, uh, it's got a wraparound card here on the cover. They reproduced the original cover. This was in the, in the uh, reduced bargain bin, so I grabbed it, you know. It's pretty good. Uh, if, I, if I just put this music on and I didn't know anything about the band, I, I would have guessed they were from America. They got a very American sound. Uh, definitely got a sort of a psyche, uh, heavy rock sound. Uh, a lot of nice guitar work, extended leads and stuff. Very, very cool. And the drummer, this, believe it or not, this band has got a thread that links them to The Clash. Uh, the drummer that's on this album left uh, several years after this record came out. And the guy that was the drummer for The Clash replaced him. Uh, I believe is, uh, is uh, I can't remember his name right now. Taylor, I think, maybe. Um, but, so I, I found that pretty interesting that uh, this is related to The Clash. Okay, the next one I got is uh, Crazy World of Arthur Brown. And this, this cover is just gorgeous. Dear Mint, beautiful cover. The glossy front. And uh, I had this album years ago. And uh, for some reason, some of these are on track, and some of these are on the Atlantic label. Just a crazy album. Um, definitely cool music to put on around the Halloween holiday. Picked this up out of a thrift store, the Monkey's Headquarters. And this is the beard cover, where it's got the different photo of the band on the back with the beards. And, uh, so this is the first release of it, and after, I don't know, six, six nine months or whatever it was, they replaced, they replaced the photo with a, a different photo because they miscredited the uh, recording engineer on the tiles. I mean, they could have just changed the, the, the uh, recording engineer credit. They could have just changed that, but they just went ahead and they changed the whole photo photograph. So it's kind of cool, you know, you get to see the monkeys and deer. It's pretty cool. And this is probably the best one I think that I'm most happy with out of the whole pile. And it's uh, Air Apparent. 
And this is an original one. It's on the Buddha label. And this is really cool, uh, psych rock. Um, I kind of expected uh, something a little bit more heavy, but it's it's really not that way. Uh, it's uh, famous for being produced by Jimi Hendrix. This album was recorded in late 68, and it was released in uh, early 69. Recorded by Hendrix. Um, from what I read online, he plays on every song on the album. And uh, also, uh, it's got uh, Robert Wyatt, the drummer from Soft Machine, and Noel Redding doing some background uh, vocals on one song. Um, I think it is, uh, if I remember right, I think it might be The Clown. I, 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 I'm sorry, I don't remember. I'll flash it. If that's wrong, I'll flash that title on the screen for you. Um, yeah, really cool album. Very, very good. Uh, four star rating. Uh, your only album, and really cool. Just picked this up today. And Net Singer. And uh, I've not heard this yet. But Corey just showed this on his channel, so when I saw it, you know, I definitely zoomed in on it. It's got the original inner sleeve. Red label, 1972. I don't know if this was ever on the green label, but mine's on the red label. So this is this is a really nice textured cover with the embossment. Very cool. Um, this one, uh, it was cheap. It was sealed. I didn't know what it was. I thought it might be a private press. I wasn't sure, but um, it's the Impossible Five. And I saw that cover, just kind of drew me to it. And it's 11 hours to Antwerp. And this is their only 12 inch. They had a couple of 7 inch singles, but uh, this is their only 12 inch as far as I know. And they're from back east. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure if this is a uh, private press. I don't know. But it's very good. I I was not disappointed. I mean, like I said, it was only a three box sealed, so I took a chance on it. It's really good. It's sort of a alternative punky rock. Very cool. Okay, I picked this up cheap. Gary Wright, The Dream Weaver, 1975, and The Shrink. Warner Brothers label. Um. I always liked the Dreamweaver. I, I thought that was a really cool song. I wish it had been a little bit more proggy along the lines of that song. Good album though. It's got the hit on My, uh, my Love Is Alive on it as well. And uh, I actually bought um, Dreamweaver uh, in 75 when that song came out. I bought it as a 45. And then this one is Hudson. And if you're around in the 70s, you remember the Hudson Brothers. They had their own TV show. They did a lot of, uh, they did a kid's show, Saturday mornings. They were very popular there in the mid 70s. And this is their uh, debut album, 1972. And it came out on Playboy Records. Short lived Playboy label. And uh, I've not listened to all of this yet, but it's. Uh, Seems to be uh, a well-liked album, um, as they these pull about fifty dollars near man online, and I got this for like a couple of dollars, and it's really clean. So I I knew it was rare, so I grabbed it, you know. And uh, yeah, they go for money, so I might end up flipping this thing. It's sort of soft rock, um, but good, you know. And I think there's just a lot of people that remember those guys, and that they. They have fond memories of them. That's why they're willing to pay that kind of money for that album. And then the last one, it's a record store day uh, EP that I just picked up. And this is a regional release. It's a 2015 uh, heavy Mexican psych EP, three songs on it. Um, two songs are uh, in, sung in English and one song is sung in Spanish. 
and it's very very good uh, limited edition of 550 copies and they reproduced the original uh, cover and it's put out by Munster um, made in Germany so this is what the original cover looks like well that would be nice to find an original of that huh so yeah I got a really good deal on this I've been eyeballing it for the past year and uh, was finally able to uh, finagle a deal where I ended up getting it they marked it down from the original price I ended up in the end I ended up getting it for like four dollars brand new so I mean I got a good deal on it okay uh, that about does it I guess for the showing um, I just got some VC LT out to uh, Nico and in, in Norway so he'll be getting that here in uh, probably 10 12 days or so and uh, I'm getting ready to uh, send out some more VCLT so you guys know who you are and that will be uh, that'll be getting mailed out soon I promise so uh, that's it man uh, till next time take it easy